Hello everyone and welcome back to my all-country tour in Microsoft Flight Sim where I flew around the world over each country during the Olympics from July 26th, 2024 to August 11th, 2024 and this is the final video. This is the video where I complete the journey, not back to my starting spot, but in fact ultimately to New Zealand. But this flight, this is the 23rd flight, is actually ultimately going to be to Fiji and I made an amendment to my flight plan i decided to add french polynesia i was wasn't entirely sure wh whether it qualified as a country and i decided that it did or i discovered that it did so i had to add that they're making this flight a whopping 5721 nautical miles and it will eventually take four hours and 57 minutes making it by far the longest journey during the 25 flights that it took to cover all the countries on a planet that i knew of and that is because we're going over large swaths of the Pacific and I wanted to cover it all in one flight. So up we go. We are taking off from Micronesia from PTPN. Of course, I'm still flying the F-111 from AVSM HD slash GKS because it is super fast and I have my custom livery for it. And we are over the Pacific. Going past the speed of sound here, you heard the crack of the sonic boom or the Mach cone. And that is part of the Marshall Islands in front of us. I am not flying over all the bits of every country. That would be very difficult and sort of hard to define anyway. And I'm especially not going ev over every island of the islands in the Pacific. I just picked a representative member of the Marshall Islands, actually two representative members, this one as well, and they are standing in for our coverage of the Marshall Islands. This is Nauru, which was the next location, and it's just one island, I think, so we're definitely flying over it, and only it. And then I turn to Kiribati, and South Tarawa there is the capital of Kiribati, so we're covering that properly. Interesting atolls we get in the Pacific here. Very delicate. And then onward to Tuvalu, though along the way we have a lot of Kiribati. Uh, the Gilbert Islands are part of Kiribati. And Kiribati is actually huge as far as ocean expanse is concerned. It, it stretches like definitely more than a thousand miles. I want to say thousands of miles to the east from here. I was thankful to get a bit of Kiribati over here instead of having to go to the other end of Kiribati. That would be tough, but this, this is all part of Kiribati here. And then I approach Tuvalu. I'm flying over Tuvalu and in this case also the capital of Tuvalu. I don't know if it has extra islands. I think it does. Maybe not. But yeah, flying over the heart of that, and then Samoa. This is Samoa, a larger island, well, a bunch of larger islands, including American Samoa afterwards. Now, American Samoa is a territory of the United States, but it does have an independent Olympic team, I believe, so I made sure to fly over that. But, uh, or, I mean, I, I forget if it has an uh, independent Olympic team, but we flew over it, so just in case, I covered it. All right, so after Samoa and American Samoa, it was on the long leg over to French Polynesia. And these islands you see in front of us are part of French Polynesia. I didn't go to the most famous island in French Polynesia, which is Tahiti. I only went to an uh, also famous island, uh, Bora Bora, which you see there. Uh, and I'm flying directly over Bora Bora. It has many points of interest in the game, more than Tahiti does. And I guess that's because it's a popular tourist destination. So someday maybe I'll get in closer and actually take a look at those points of interest, but not in this case. We fly the F-111 at high altitude to maintain the speed because it's a long, long trip flying over every country on the planet. So next up, we are headed to the Cook Islands and in particular, uh, I. Aitataki. That's Aitataki, part of the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands extend southward. This is northernmost of the Cook Islands, I believe. And this is Niue. Niue is uh, a part of New Zealand or affiliated with New Zealand, but 
it's sort of independent-ish, uh, so it's complicated. Uh, I don't know whether to call it a country, so I flew over it, it counts, um, just in case. And then Tonga, Tonga is definitely a country. And Tonga was important because it's the last opportunity to land before heading over to Fiji. And so that runway you see right there, that was the abort opportunity if it turned out I didn't have enough fuel to proceed to Fiji. And it was a tight thing, but I did have enough to go to Fiji, so I proceeded. Fiji has two big airports, uh, one on the east coast and one on the west coast. I ultimately landed on the west coast one, the one further away, but the one at Suva was serviceable as well. It's a little bit smaller though, so I was sort of glad I didn't have to land at it. The one on the west coast is more than 10,000 feet, and that's Nadi International NFFN. So this is me completing the longest flight of the journey, nearly 5 hours, and 5,721 nautical miles. So, with the landing at Fiji we see here, that concluded the flights on August 10th. I did two flights on August 10th, one in the previous video as well. And that was flight 23. So, just two more flights after that. It was 25 flights total. And the total distance that I ultimately covered was 80,085 nautical miles. 80,085 nautical miles. And the flight time was 76 hours and 46 minutes altogether. So there's the penultimate flight, flight 24, going from Fiji to Timor-Leste. Uh, to go all the way back to Indonesia to get Timor-Leste, but I did. Uh, we also fly over Papua New Guinea and a few other, the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. So taking off again, you can see it in context with Australia on the sky for sim map. Early on with the flights, I kept it to below the barber pole line, which is generally about Mach 2.25. Uh, but on the later flights, because it didn't seem like it was going to kill me if I went a little bit faster, I went more like Mach 2.35. So up we go. I took advantage of whatever speed I could get. And crossing over to Vanuatu, a uh, flight from Fiji to Vanuatu, about 500 nautical miles. And there is some of the islands of Vanuatu, there are many islands of Vanuatu. As you can see on the map there, plenty of airports there too, and a point of interest. The actual landscape didn't have particularly detailed photo scenery, I didn't think though. And then the Solomon Islands, which is what we have here. Lots of Solomon Islands. I basically flew along the Solomon Islands before turning towards Papua New Guinea. And that is still the Solomon Islands there. I think there's a point of interest there. Yep, a little blue marker. All the flights were done during Twitch live streams, so I had witnesses, but Twitch only keeps the videos for two months, and so I'm producing this edited version for YouTube, uh, so that I have a record of having done all this. Uh, but yes, there are in theory people who watched parts of it. <laughs> I mean, some, some part there was always somebody watching, uh, keeping me honest or whatever. And uh, of course I had the regular stream music which I got from OC Remix and, um, and that's generally remixes of video game music. And here we are at Papua New Guinea. And you see the credit in the upper left hand corner. Of course I was happy to do this flight before Flight Sim 2024 comes out and I have a few other things that I want to do in Flight Sim 2020 before Flight Sim 2024 comes out because I, I don't know exactly what's going to be compatible and you know they say that it's always everything's got to be wonderful and everything but we know that especially with the experience with X-Plane 12 and X-Plane 11 that really compatibility is complicated so I'm not expecting all the scenery and all the planes to work perfectly right off the bat so 
but it's going to be really hard to fly around in Flight Sim 2020 when Flight Sim 2024 is around, as here I am approaching East Timor. We can see the Timor Sea in the map view there. Unfortunately, not great detail around here. Uh, I don't know if it will be any better in Flight Sim 2024. Uh, maybe their autogen stuff, because this is obviously autogen stuff, uh, will at least look better, but I doubt they have good photo scenery around here. It should be available. I mean, there are satellites covering the entire world these days. And they do offer that stuff. Alright, so landing here at WPEC after a flight of 3,277 nautical miles that took 2 hours and 47 minutes. The other big thing I'd like to do is to fly the PMDG DC-6 around the world. And I think I'll do that in the context of my Neofly career. Because I just purchased the DC-6 in the Neofly career. And so I... well... The obvious thing would, to do would be to continue the career flying around the world with it. So, I didn't uh, get the map view for the start of the final flight. Maybe because I was rushing to get it done. Uh, but here we are taking off from East Timor WPEC, headed to Auckland. The only other country we fly over is Australia. So it's just from East Timor over Australia to New Zealand. And that's it for the last flight. The distance of the flight though is 3,241 nautical miles and will take 2 hours and 52 minutes. So pretty substantial length. Not that many countries, unfortunately. Australia is big. And yeah, East Timor looks like that. Maybe. We'll, we'll see how it looks in Flight Sim 2024. It could hardly be any worse, right? Right? <laughs> so, there's only room for improvement. That to our left is Melville Island, as I head towards Darwin, Australia. Uh, not named after Herman Melville. I looked that up. It's some other person. Which is a shame, really. And this is the strait between Melville Island and mainland Australia. And that's Darwin, Australia down there. Now, in relation to the look of Australia in Kerbal Space Program's real solar system, uh, people kept mentioning to me that it's not really all desert. It's, it's really mostly desert. <laughs> I mean, they were objecting to the fact that it looks very, very deserty, but it really does look very, very deserty. Uh, I appreciate that along the coasts where people actually live, it's greener but that's a very thin sliver of what is ultimately a very deserty Australia. <laughs> from, from, uh, I mean, maybe, maybe in flights in 2024 they'll, they'll make it look greener around here, but the outback is very much like this. Those lakes, by the way, are just temporary lakes. They're not permanent lakes. Uh, they, it makes it look very blue, but they're intermittent lakes. So here in New South Wales, we do get some more greenery as I approach Sydney and I make sure to fly over Sydney on my way out to New Zealand so there is Sydney I haven't done too much as far as deliberately flying over cities uh, unless I'm actually landing at them but I did deliberately fly over Sydney because after all if you're headed to New Zealand it's sort of along the way and you can see I'm flying a speed above the barber pole, the sort of technical speed limit, but the actual speed limit for the F-111 is apparently Mach 2.5, so we are under that. It's just not sustainable at the speeds, but nothing was penalizing me for sustaining Mach 2.4-ish. Anyway, here I am slowing down on approach to Auckland. Unfortunately, I very quickly lost daylight. It was looking okay at this point. I mean, we're pretty close to Auckland right now. And the sun is clearly still out, but it very, very quickly started setting on me. So, yeah. Well, you can see the runway there. I wanted to try to make this as smooth as possible, but I was also quite tired at this point. It had been 80,000 nautical miles, 76 hours, 46 minutes over the course of 17 days. And this was it. Was it a good plan? Well, 
it doesn't make for very popular viewing apparently. I I thought it would be a more heroic adventure than it ended up being. But I mean at least I have a record of it and I've done it once. Uh, I hope I didn't miss any countries. I tried my best. And I've looked over the maps over and over and over again and I didn't think I did. But perhaps it also depends on the definition of country. But here we are wrapping it up and I taxi it in. They actually ended up having me park on grass. It was not, not a very nice place for me to park to conclude this thing. I don't know why the parking space is like that. And also the arrow wasn't quite where the guy was standing to guide me in. Well, not entirely on grass. There was some concrete there or tarmac. But yeah, there we have it. That's it. My all-country tour. That is its conclusion. 25 flights. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.